Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Friday again, another Friday stream. It's December 23rd, which can only mean one thing. It's a Christmas stream today. A Christmas it stream. It, oh, stream. Oh, it could Christmas be a Hanukkah stream. stream. It's a holiday stream. <laughs> so we're going to have a good one today. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I thought, as you can see, I'm sitting at my animation desk, my paper animation desk. I've been, uh, Dustin and I have been working diligently on trying to get a new course on animating on paper. And so I've got it on the brain. And uh, with all the talk lately of AI and all this crap, I just thought, you know what, let's pick up a piece, a, a piece of paper, a pencil. Look at this really technical piece of equipment right here. Oh, look at that. Super technical. So we're going to use that today. We're going to try to make some animation magic the old-fashioned way on paper. I'm going to do some dialogue, too. I'm going to show you how to use exposure sheets and show you how we did lip sync and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be fun today. But before that, <clears throat> we've got some holiday sales going on. Yes, we've got some sales going on. So we've been running our 12 Days of Christmas sale. Today is day 11 of that, tomorrow being the last one. And we are running a promotion right now where if you use promo code WINTERSAVE, you winter can get save. winter dash save. You can get any course, brush set, or photo pack on the website for just ten dollars. Just so ten dollars. Enter that at checkout over at creatureartteacher.com. That's winter dash save. And today we've got a new course up for pre order. We've got sculpting superheroes for action figures by Tony Cipriano. Tony has done a, a number of courses on our website. And he's got, uh, he's a ZBrush expert and he does all kinds of toys and action figures and all that professionally uh, for companies like Sideshow Collectibles and NECA and all the toy, big toy companies out there, Marvel, all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be a really cool course. Comes out in February. You can pre-order it now for 50% off. And I think you could actually use that code on that pre-order too today. Yes. It'll work for that. So even more off. Yeah, so it'll be even more off. And you can pre-order that now over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. And it's going to be really cool because he's going to teach you ZBrush sculpture, but also articulation. So how to make a toy, basically, you know, and make it poseable. So. Yep. And uh, as always, we've got our memberships available on sale. If you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, we have two membership plans to choose from, our monthly streaming option and our annual plan. Uh, which is $100 off right now. And if you saw last week's fri live stream, Aaron uh, drew this big uh, leopard. The big uh, gigantic leopard. Gigantic leopard using Sharpie and charcoal and Conte yeah. crayon. And we're going to be randomly tomorrow, actually on Christmas Day, we're going to be picking one random member from member. our website, yep. streaming or annual member. And we're going to give them that paint or that uh, drawing. Yep. I'm excited about that. Yeah. I want to do more of that. Yeah. I so head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com. So are we good to go? Yep, we're good to go. Are we ready? All right. yep. Are we ready? We yeah. are good to go. Well, let's go to the down shooter, Dustin. Got it. So here's our little Santa character. I just sat down and designed him really quick. I didn't know. Uh... This is a 10-minute design, so forgive me. It's a little complex. It takes a little longer to get him simpl more simplified. But this is, um, this is him. And I thought, you know what? It'd be fun to do a little dialogue. So here's, here's what he's going to be singing. That's it. Here we go. One more time. That's me. That's me being Santa. <laughs> so, how do you do dialogue, especially with paper animation? That was a big question we used to get. And um, this is what we would do. So, this is what's called an exposure sheet. And what an exposure sheet is, uh, back in the day, let's say I was, if I was working on a feature, um, it would have the shot number... It would have the production number. It would have the animator. Hey, Blaze, right there. And it would have the shot length. It would have a start, and, uh, and then it would have a finish. Okay, and right now we're finishing this. We're going to finish this one at about uh, frame 69, right there. So that's going to be our, f our cut, right there. Cut. All right, frame 69. And what do, I, what do I mean by frame 69? Well, this is what I mean. Let me show you. <clears throat> Each of these columns going across represents a frame of film. Every column going down represents a layer or a character. And each column does something different. So here's a background. And, and you go from right to left. 
So there's the bottom, and then there's the, the, the background. It goes underneath all the characters. And then if you have several characters, they stack up like so. Now, each column going across is a frame. It's one frame of film, okay? So we, what we would do is if there was dialogue, and dialogue sound right here is written in this big column right here. And so what we would do is once the, the dialogue track was laid onto the film track, back in the old days when we'd run film through the, through the reel-to-reel, um, there was a frame counter. And we would have dialogue readers that would listen to that sound back and forth, and they would see on what frame each, on, on each shot each sound came on. And so here I've got ho, ho, ho. And what I've done is I've listened to the track. I, I, I actually input it into TV Paint, and I was able to see the, the, the sound wave on the, on the shot, and I could read it onto this exposure sheet. And hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing something right here real quick. Avalon. Avalon, we're on live stream right now, so go on out for a second, and then come back, and come back in a second. So uh, that was my granddaughter, by the way. She was trying to show me a funny dog video. <laughs> <laughs> so on frame 20... I have the H for a ho, for the first ho, and then 22 starts the O, and then frame 27 is the second H for ho, ho, and then frame 29 is the O, and then 35 is the H, and then the 37 is the O, and that carries all the way through because it's a long ho. <clears throat> that carries through to frame 55, and then it goes uh, dark after that. So th that's how I know... On frame, I, I just know on frame 20, I need to have the him getting into the, the, the H or O shape. Okay, and then, and it's really just two shapes. It's a, it's a big O and small O. That's how, that's how it's going to be for the ho, ho, ho. And um, the other thing, too, because it's so broad, uh, one of the things that we tend to do is we, form, we tend to form the shape of our, our sounds before we actually make them. So... I usually hit my dialogue several frames ahead of time. So he's going to be hitting that ho, ho, ho. And because it's so big, I'm actually going to have him hit the anticipation about frame 13 and then start to hit it on about frame 17. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. And I'll explain it as we go. It sounds a little confusing, maybe. But I keep... I'm. Um, this is going to go over here off to the side so I can draw. There we go, and I'm actually going to grab a new pencil, because that one's a little worn out. And the, the pencils I'm using, i am kind of got onto these uh, Mitsubishi 10B pencils. They're really soft. They draw really well. So let's take him... Put him off to the side. Actually, no. Let's just let's keep him. We'll use that as our frame one. Actually, no. <laughs> Sorry, can't make up my mind. I want to. I know. I want to do something a little more three quarter. Start him down a little lower. So here, and I keep. Because you know how many frames this is, how many drawings will it be? Um, it'll probably end up, well, I'm only going to hit key drawings right now, so if we can hit 20 or 30 drawings today, I'll be happy with that. Cool. I'll be happy, too, because right after this uh, live stream, i got to go finish up Christmas shopping. Oh, nice. <laughs> and we Just got my grandson. My, grandson's is, my grandson is here, Aiden. Say hi, Aiden. Hello. <laughs> Hope everyone's having Good is it yeah. cold in Florida right now? Twitch question. Well, oh, the temperature is starting to drop a little bit. It's That's, getting there. I think we just dropped below 60 degrees, and it's but it is supposed to get down into the 20s tonight. So that's a, that's going to be a quick. That's fast cold for drop. Florida. That's very yeah. cold for Florida. Santa? I am drawing Santa. Right, let me uh, double check on the weather here. It's actually currently on my radar weather is saying 62 currently, in uh, 62 Fahrenheit. In which in Celsius. So here we go. So we're just gonna draw here. 
Yeah, so 60 deg 62 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to uh, 16.6 degrees Celsius. Give him a little part in his beard. Abby asks, how do you calculate the frames on the X sheet? I have ADHD and I'm horrible at technical stuff like math. Calculate the frames on the X sheet? The frames are already marked on the X sheet. Right. I think she's not really. So there's 24 frames per second. So I think. Oh, she's yeah. Actually, there's 24 frames per second. So I know um, that uh, basically if we play it back this from this distance to this distance right here, from here down to here. That's one second of film. Okay. So that, that, that'll give you a little idea. My, my own personal question, has anyone ever tried um, animating in ones in 60 frames per second? Uh, well, not, a, we didn't do that at Feature, but I know Glenn Keane did that with, uh, uh, was it Duet, I think? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because it was VR. And um, Kasra asked uh, earlier, uh, how did we like Avatar 2? Loved it. Absolutely it's an amazing film-going experience. Go see it. Yes. See it on the big screen. Uh, Robbie says, Edmonton up, in, uh, up north is minus 44 yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> that is the same in Fahrenheit and Celsius, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. 44 degrees below zero. Uh, Oliver on Facebook said, uh, commented saying, hey, greetings from uh, Austria and happy holidays. Just came here from watching Wolf Walkers. Oh, nice. That's a good film. <clears throat> yeah, you might have seen Aaron's name in the credits. Yes. Wait, are, you, are you making a different angle? Yes, I'm doing a little bit different angle. Thank you. So there he is. So we're going to start. This is our drawing one. Did Glenn King use exposure sheets? Yeah, we all did. We all had to use exposure sheets. You have That's to. That, you have to. That, it's, it's the exposure necessity. sheet is basically the guide for everybody else down the road. So when the camera people shoot the, the shot, they need an exposure sheet to know how long to expose each drawing. There's camera directions on there. There's all the different levels, you know, effects animation, different types of characters. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in there. Everybody, every shot has an exposure sheet. There we go. So there's our shot one, or drawing one. One right there. Now I want him to anticipate the big hoe. So. Basically, what you're doing is you're making like a little flip paper of him saying ho, ho, ho. Yes, exactly. How many times did you have to redraw Santa before you started doing the animation with him today? Uh, this, you're seeing my first three drawings right here. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, Julia, uh, mentioned about the Florida weather saying, I, I was born and raised and studied in Florida. I've never seen it drop below 60. Uh, what? Oh. It's drop below, it drops below 60 every year. In fact, um, what was back when I was in sixth grade, uh, it, during the night it actually had dropped below, like, down to the 30s before. That's going to be in the 20s today. I've, 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 been, oh, yeah. I've been in Florida where it's dropped below down to 18 degrees. Yeah. I've lived in Florida for 46 years and I've never not seen it go. The I've, Every winter it goes to at least 30 something degrees. Question for Nick and Dustin. What are oh. your plans for Christmas? I know I asked Aaron, but I haven't asked y'all. Uh, well, I am going to be uh, with the family, with, uh, with Dad and Vinanta and all them and um and yeah and i am going to be opening presents from santa under the christmas tree on christmas morning uh with my wife and my son and then we'll probably mosey over here at some point later in the day would be my guess um i i'm not sure it's a bit of a long drive from from where i live now and then tomorrow night we're going to be over at Tony Cipriano's house for dinner on Christmas Eve. And um, speaking of which, Tony Cipriano has a brand new course that's available <laughs> for pre-order now at Creature Art Teacher. It's sculpting superheroes for action figures. He takes you through how to sculpt in ZBrush. 
Um, and he's going to show you how to do superheroes and anatomy, and then also how to articulate, uh, how to make them, uh, build them for articulation so they can actually, you could 3D print a toy if you wanted. Nice segue. I thought so too. <laughs> so this is the squash for the anticipation. I want him to kind of come down before he goes up for the big ho, ho, ho. Uh, Castro asks, what's the difference uh, between layout and background in animation, either in CG or traditionally? Uh... Well, a layout is a background, and a background is a layout. A layout is the drawing for the background. Now, what's also included in the layout is the camera direction, where the characters go, all of that. So the layout basically is the rough drawing of the background. Uh, Twitch question, is there a way to prevent your drawings from becoming stiff? Most of the time when I draw, I struggle to get fluidity in my drawings. Yes, and that's, you know, a big part of it is trying to find that gesture. Try to find that gesture as much as possible. Hold on one second here as I try to find my gesture. Um, it's finding the gesture. It's you know, there's there's other principles to look out for. You know, watch out for twinning and, and you know, try to find fluidity in your pose and all kinds of different things. So, uh, actually, I'm going to pull this up. We're going to do this. I'm going to change this up a little bit. But it's really trying to find... Um, you know, keeping things from getting stiff is all about finding the fluidity. There we go. We're going to do this. Are you animating on twos or ones? Right now, I'm just posing it out. I'm not animating on twos or ones. Right now, I'm just hitting the poses. This is just hitting the keyframes, right? Hitting the keyframes, and then I'm going to, I'll figure out the timing after that. So this would be an example of pose to pose animation, correct? Yes. Somewhat. So you can see that squash now. See that? See him squashing down. By the way, a bunch of people said hello. You hello. Have one. So now I want to hit that big hole. So this will be ho. If we listen to this again. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. See, it's not ho, ho, ho. It's a ho, ho, ho. And that, that makes a difference. Ho, ho, ho. So, ho, ho, ho. So I want to hit, I'm going to hit the peak. Ho, ho, ho. Right about 29, frame 29. I'm editing the, so many of the uh, animation videos that I, as you were like uh, frame twenty nine, I instinctively try to pause the video to change the to change the camera view. <laughs> so here, uh, I'll stretch them out a little bit. Sorry, go ahead, Dustin. Uh, from Rick on Facebook, has it taken you a bit too long to practice a character before animating it? Has it taken me a bit too long? I don't know what you like, mean. Have you usually taken longer than you usually do to study and uh, uh, practice a character before animating it? I have no idea what you're asking. Like thumbnailing. Say that again. I think what they're asking is, has it ever taken you too long to uh, to do that? Did you, like, you ever I'm, behind schedule? Oh, yeah. No. And from uh, Andrew Sharp, uh, do you ever get paper cuts? <laughs> Occasionally, but not very often. Do you ever get any like between your fingers, like through the webbing? I have before. 
Doesn't sound fun. Why didn't the skeleton go to the Christmas party? I don't know. He didn't have the guts. That's a good. That's a good joke. But no, uh, because he had no body to go with. Uh, uh, that uh, is, that's from Fun uh, Films Animations on YouTube. Uh, You're fired. He doesn't even work for us. <laughs> You're fired anyway. We will find you. Oh, 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 oh. See that? Wow. Martin says that uh, where he lives, uh, when I was a child, uh, we got minus 24 Celsius one time. That was the coldest I can remember. Minus 24 Celsius. That's negative 11.2 Fahrenheit. I don't know if you heard or at the beginning of the stream, Dustin, someone up in Edmonton uh, says that it's minus 44 in uh, Edmonton right now. Minus is, 44. It's the same in both Fahrenheit. So Celsius and Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's my yeah, that's minus forty seven Fahrenheit. Holy moly. Yeah, the coldest I experienced was like minus twenty, minus twenty five degrees Fahrenheit. In the in uh and that was during the afternoon. Uh Ginger Ninja on YouTube, Ginger Ninja seventy nine, says uh Merry Christmas and question. Do you find yourself making the face that you are drawing? Yes, all the time. Uh, Abby asks, Aaron, do you have a favorite Christmas movie? Not really. I mean, I, I, I like Christmas music. We listened to it last night while we were hanging outside last night. Uh, I don't listen to it a lot, but uh, if I'm forced to, I will. It's a Christmas movie. Oh, Christmas movie. I thought you said music. Nope. Oh. Um, Probably uh, uh, Christmas Vacation and uh, Christmas, Christmas Story. So Bridget asks, do you plan out how many frames you're going to use ahead of time so you know how to get the timing right? Well, that's, that's, yeah, what, that's, what, the, sheet, that's what the exposure the sheet X does. The sheet dictates how many frames you have to yep. get from one word syllable to the next. So he can't do, yeah, more, can he can't do any more I or any more. I can explain it. Right right sure. I'm just, I'm just so this, this shows the start and then the finish right here. And so I know these are all my frames working down through the dialogue. So here's the dialogue written out, and I know that there's 19 frames before the dialogue starts. I know that my dialogue goes from frame 21 through frame 55. So I've got basically 35 frames of dialogue, and then, uh, and then he's out after that. So it's all planned out on the exposure sheet. Mustafa says, I like Mickey's Christmas Carol with Scrooge McDuck. And both of the classic Home Alone movies. Mm. I like Home Alone 4. That's my favorite. <laughs> Just kidding. No, Home Alone... Uh, the first Home Alone, it will always be best. But my, my favorite bit in particular is from Home Alone 2. Um, when the kid throws the bricks, <laughs> bricks at him. I'd... I'd <laughs> I'd say my favorite Christmas movie is probably Elf. I'd say mine growing up was um, Christmas Vacation. Yeah, that's a good I think one. I watch that one most often. The more recently, uh, I would say Klaus has become one of my Oh, yeah, I love Klaus. I forgot. Movies. Oh, 
Oh, oh, see there, squash, and oh, 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 let's listen to that again. Okay, so, so let's get, so here's our, that's our peak, and then let's bring them down to the last. Oh. Who is Ken Duncan? Ken Duncan is a great animator. He's got Ken Duncan Studios in, in California. He's a Canadian animator. Uh, he was the main animator of Jane from Tarzan. He was also one of the main, uh, animators of Belle and Beauty and the Beast. Mark Hen. Uh, it was Ken Duncan Studios that did a lot of the stuff in uh, uh, the new Mary Poppins animation. So here I'm tilting his head towards us a little bit. Oh ho! Robbie asks, do you find those pencils that you're using are very close to charcoal? No, they've, they're very much a pencil. They're not like charcoal at all. Uh, speaking of Klaus, YouTube question, did you hear that their Spa Studios animation Ember was canceled by Netflix? I did. I did see that. That's a bummer. Aaron wants to know, is that your Ken Weber desk from Disney, and did any other animators use it before you purchased it? No, this is my desk. It's been my desk for 30 some odd years. This is the desk I got when I when I was working at Disney. And then when I left Disney, I was able to take it with me. And no, nobody used it before him because no. he started at the first day of the Florida studio. So they made desks specifically for the Florida studio. Yep. YouTube comment, Aaron, I recently watched your Grinch drawing time lapse and it was amazing. <laughs> that was a few years ago. Uh, Alfred on Facebook asks, uh, uh, Aaron, uh, does uh, Aaron do men mentorships? And if so, what is the cost? What's that? What? Uh, do you do mentorships? No, I don't do mentorships. Not right, not right now, I don't. We're too busy, unfortunately. But maybe somewhere down the road we'll be doing something like that. There we go. That's a better expression. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Andrew uh, on Facebook uh, asks, I've never uh, heard you use sound effects when you are animating. Uh, like some animators uh, make sounds like beep, boop, blip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> beep, boop, blip. Uh, is this something you save for alone moments? Also, what would the benefit of making sound effects while animating does it help one get into character or does it help with a sense of timing and just making random sound effects while you're yeah i don't i'm no that's kooky i don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> i do tend to make you know I'll, I'll i'm thinking about you know the sound that he's making you know as i'm as i'm animating yeah like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah and, and i do say i always joke around that it helps it, it helps to make the sound 
But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of times I'll, I'll be doing, you know, I'll make little sound effects and I guess I do, I guess. Right. Yeah, you do. And I've heard you do like, boom, there you go, or like a boop, you know, a little bit like that. Yeah, I think it's more unconscious than, it's not a conscious thing that I do. Yeah, it's not really a technique. It's not a technique that you need to learn or anything. Right, exactly. Ho oh, ho! Ho ho! See that big stretch? Ho oh, ho ho! Big stretch, big stretch. If you like this stream and you're interested in learning more, uh, Aaron has a new paper animation course that's available for pre-order up on our website. If you go to creatureartteacher.com, Dustin, you got the pre-order slide. Oh, yes, I do. We've actually got three courses that are up for pre-order and actually make that two because the oil painting with Ken's Produso course that you see on the left of your screen is actually available now. So, so no more pre-order on that no one? No more pre-order. Well, it's still 50% off for a limited time, so oh, you can gotcha. still get that pre-order price. <clears throat> so you can get all three of those courses on your screen for 50% off, including Aaron Blaze's Animation on Paper, uh, which comes out January 1st. And then in February, we've got Design Stylization with David Coleman coming out, where he takes you through his approach to designing characters in different styles, different looks, what have you. So there we go. Meredith says, ho, ho, ho. Meredith says, I'm just starting to learn oil painting. I'm really excited to check out the course. Yeah, you'll love it. It's a really good, really good course. Ho, ho, ho. So that's our first, I'm going to make this one our first ho. So this is going to be drawing 21 of our character. Right here. This is drawing 21. So, so you guys can see, here's the start of the shot. This is drawing one, which I'll put right here. Drawing one. And then I want him to squash down. I'm going to make this drawing 17. No, I'm, I'm going to make this drawing 15. Right there. So this is drawing 15 for the squash. I circle my keys. Circle the keys. Okay? And then this is going to be our final, our final number. So this is going to be drawing 68 or 69. Right there. <clears throat> so, armed with that information, as my father always used to say. Now we're ready to start breaking everything down. We got our main poses. These are, this is basically where we're going to hit. Now, there's animation that's going to happen, obviously, between these poses, especially in the ho, ho, ho. Erica says, that. oh, I need to get started on that oil painting course by Ken. Yeah, there's a course yeah. you haven't done yet, Erica. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> need to keep that title. Is there any uh, progress on the uh, uh, on the upcoming Discord channel? Uh, it'll be announced soon. <laughs> Dustin, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Uh, do you know the animators that worked on Klaus? Yes. Can oh, we got a bunch of raiders on Twitch. Hello, raiders. Sergio Pablos. Uh, Who's the director as well. Yeah. James Baxter. Uh, top 
Uh, John Pomeroy did some stuff on Klaus. Yeah. I think Tom and Tony Bancroft did some too, I think. So what we're going to see is going to kind of squash down a little bit. Uh, Tammy asks, uh, what, helps with, uh, what helps you when you have art block or in times where you don't feel like drawing? Well, I, I'll go for a little walk out in the woods. I'll watch a movie. I'll do, I'll just start drawing. That's a big one. Just force yourself to start drawing. Uh, do you have plans for a Brother Bear 20th anniversary event next year if uh, Disney organizes it? No. I don't think they'll be organizing it. Yet. We might do something at CTN, though. Yes. Depending on where we are with Snow Bear. Uh, Andrew Sharp asks, are you currently working on breakdowns? Yes, these are these are break. Oh, so. What I didn't explain to you guys is how I flip. So when I'm doing an in-between or a breakdown, I'm looking at the first drawing, then the in-between drawing, and then the drawing I'm going into. So that's what I'm doing here. And this is going to be drawing 11. So I'll make that a key. Because I'm going to keep his eyes open. And this is all, everything that I'm, I'm doing, I'm showing you guys today, and then a whole bunch more is in my new course that I've been creating, working on, animating on paper. Matter of fact, go to the, uh, go to the side camera, Dustin. Mm-hmm, one sec, there it is. All of this, if you look at all of this, this is what I've animated <coughs> in the course. That's how much paper we've gone through. It's about 20 pounds of paper. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of drawings. It's a very full course. It's going to be about, I'm, I'm guessing, about 15 hours worth. Would you say, Dustin? Maybe more? Um, probably a little more. It's a, it's a very thick stack. <laughs> yeah. And it's all in real time. So I'm taking you through everything. If you like this stream, you'll love that course. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-order it now at CreatureArtTeacher.com. So here I'm having, dragging his expression just a little bit as he down so everything you see me doing right now this is how we did it in the old days this is the old the old way of animating I always tell this story I remember my boss coming up to me and telling me that when I was animating on Beauty and the Beast and him telling me that we we're gonna be animating on computer screens and, and you know in a, in one day and I told I told him he was crazy I didn't think there was any way we'd be able to animate on computer screens. I want to let people know that if they head over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, we are running our winter save sale. You can get any course for just $10 if you enter promo code WINTER-SAVE. And one of the cool things about all of our courses is that they can, every single one on the website, including our memberships, can be sent as a gift. So you can schedule that to be delivered Christmas morning or whatever holiday, someone's birthday, whatever you want. 
Uh, if you go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com right now and enter that code WINTERSAVE, you can get any of the courses for just 10 bucks and you can even send them as a gift. So they make a great last minute gift idea because they're delivered electronically right to someone's mailbox. Email. So, Merry Christmas. Would you recommend learning to animate through an online school or is it possible to get an internship at a studio and learn that way? It's possible to get an internship, but usually you don't get an internship until you know the, the skills. So I would say learn as much as you can online first and then go for your internship. Uh, Leandro uh, asked, while animating, if you change your mind about the timing, uh, do you have to remake the whole exposure sheet? Yes. But the thing you is, have you have to renumber. But you can't change your mind about the timing because it's driven by the dialogue. No, but you can change. No, but that, that's not true. You can change. The dialogue is always there, but you can change your dime, timing and going into the dialogue, what you do within the dialogue. Right. I'm just I mean, saying done, you have I've to done, hit those syllables on those. Oh, times. always. That's yeah. all I meant. You can't change that timing. Otherwise, it won't look in sync, right? Right. But I've changed. Matter of fact, on a couple of the, the tests that I do for the course, I change my timing within, as I'm going, I've discovered a better way of doing something. And so I'll change it on the X sheet. Here, I'm going to have him popping up. I'm not sure what the timing is on this one yet, what drawing, what, what number this is going to be. Well, that's 21. Yeah, I might change some of my numbering here a little bit too. I want a big stretch right here. creating a drag in that and his mustache. He's starting to do the ho ho ho. There's more control with a pencil than a uh, Cintiq? Well, they're just two different... No, not necessarily. It's just two, it's two different tools as far as I'm concerned. It's just different. No, it's just two different tools. I love, I love animating on a Cintiq. I love animating on paper, too. I love having the... The tangibility, you know, the tangi the tangibility <laughs> <-ness> <laughs> <You okay? laughs> of having the paper. I love having, you know, paper in my hands. 
How do you stop yourself from going into so much detailing in a blocking stage? It's really hard for me to stop the urge of going into detailing in, in early stage. Yeah, sometimes I don't. I mean, I, I, I end up doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hard time fighting the urge as well. What animation program can create the closest effect uh, to drawing with a pencil on paper? I'm, I'm holding it right here. That one, this program. <laughs> pencil. <laughs> no, actually, t I like TV Paint. I mean, that's the closest. That's all, but that's all I ever used. Well, you've used Procreate now for animation. Oh, that's true. I, I, I was thinking more on, along the, the heavier, more robust lines of but yeah um, tv paints i mean uh, uh procreate's pretty cool in, in that it's i love their brushes i think their brushes are great the procreate pencil is awesome uh, have you ever based any of your characters after uh, famous movie stars no never done that actually this is have is you older? ever drawn a self-portrait yes I didn't like that, that, that drawing was coming out a little too straight on. Should be more over here like so. And a little drag. I had to do self-portraits in, in college, in my illustration classes. That was something we, we had to do. Yeah, it's a better drawing right there. You can tell already. The key here is to get a little bit of a stretch from that squash into, into this drawing here. Go. Oh, 
ho, ho. Except it's not that. Ho, ho, ho. It's more like that. What words of advice would you give to someone still looking for their signature drawing style? I know it takes time and practice, but any particular things one can draw to help? Your signature drawing style will emerge. It's not, it's just something that evolves. So, that being said, don't just keep drawing, just keep working. That's the big key. So here he is coming down, squashing. Ho! Oh! Here's our big ho, ho, ho. Let's get another drawing in here. And then I'm going to start looking at getting some other keys in. So what would you say was the hardest animation principle to learn? They're all, they all go together. So there's no, I don't know, there's no... It's learning how, it's not so much one being harder than the others, it's understanding how to use them all at once. They all, you know, they all are part of the, there's no one principle that's harder than anything else, but it is, you need to remember to use them all. Let's listen to that again. <laughs> All right. Ho ho ho. Now, do you do uh, straight ahead or pose to pose? Right now I'm doing kind of pose to pose. Getting a really big drag in his mustache here. Eyes start to open up. It's going to look a little weird because his eyes are just partly open. And then they, they fly open. Big stretch on that cheek. How do animators approach animating changes in the background, like breaking a wall or a cave crashing? Does the detail of the object change anything? Do Say that how, again? How do you basically, uh, how do you approach animating a change in the background, like uh, somebody busting through a wall or the, a cave crumbling in the background? That's, that's all of its own animation on it. It's, it's, 
uh, that's done with effects animation where someone is in charge of handling like the rock and stuff like that, if I'm understanding the question right. Well, like, let's imagine that in, in the in a scene in Brother Bear, if the river was to change direction because a big rock fell into it. Yeah, that's all just effects animation. Yeah. That's an effects animator comes in and, and handles that. Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. How do you draw those expressions without losing the anatomy, or is it better to lose some of the anatomy for better expression? Uh, no, the, you don't ever lose the anatomy because I'm, uh, if I'm stretching, I'm still, I'm still thinking about the anatomy underneath. I'm just stretching the anatomy as well. So I, I don't ever lose the anatomy. I'm always thinking about the anatomy. That way I know where to spring back into. Our, this is going to be our first hoe. So this is going to be 11. I say this is 15. I don't know that this is 15. It might be 15, 17, 19, 21. 17, 19, right there. And actually, we're going to go backwards. That's not going to be 15. I'm changing that numbering. So I want to slow out of that more. So I'm going to make this frame 9. So I'll have 1 to 9 and then 9 to 17. So what I mean here is... YouTube question. If you were to put together your own Avengers team of animators... Who would you pick and why? James Baxter, Glenn Keane, uh, Sergio Pablos. You all right over there, Dustin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, camera bag. Uh, these are all the best guys in the world. Eric Goldberg, Mark Henn. So I'm going to animate backwards into this key, into the squash key. So this, uh, the next one will be 15. What's the difference between a regular animator and an effects animator? Uh, uh, well, effects animator animates effects. So they animate fire, water, rain, shadows, smoke, lightning, all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and then specifically, it's character animators. Character animators animate the characters. But they're both animators. Yep, they're we're both animators. Different, different specializations. down on those eyebrows. What, what do you think is the most important skill for an animator? Drawing. If you're, if you're a 2D animator. Acting and drawing. So if you're, if you're a 3D animator, I think it's, it's your ability to, to act. To put yourself into the shot. That's really what animators are, are actors. I think I would also add in there um, the ability to um, adapt and change uh, drawing styles on the go. Yeah, but it's still, like, to me, it's still not as important as having to be able to act and draw. Oh, yeah. I would say it's more of a sub. So 
going to start to open his mouth here. Do you ever reuse animation paper and animate on the back of it? No. No, never do that. Because you end up seeing through it. Following up on that uh, effects animator or regular animator, are those both done on paper? Yeah. Well, it depends on if you're doing paper animation. If you're doing a, a film on paper animation, then yeah, they're both done on paper. You know, when we, when we did uh, you know, our stuff on Brother Bear, all, of the, all the effects, you know, back in the 90s in the, you know, Disney, all the effects were done on paper. Now, there might be some times where they, they, they would add a, a CG element in there, say but that would be printed out on, that would be printed out on paper for the animators to animate. To. When, uh, when the bears are sliding down the flume at, at the, at the, uh, at the salmon run, that was all done in CG, and then that was printed on paper for the kit for the animators to follow, and then it was all composited later on. his little squashy hat. Is there any specific reason why Acme paper uses rectangular uh, punches instead of only round ones? I, I don't know the reason. Uh, I looked this up the other day, and what they said is it holds the paper in place better, and it's for speed, changing the, supposedly it's faster, changing the, uh, oh, yeah? the paper out. Well, that's good. If you do all round holes, the paper will tend to tear more. Oh, yeah, as far as, yeah, I thought you meant the three as opposed to five or whatever it is that we have. Yeah. You know, they were asking to correct the shape more than that. Yeah. Uh, do you think it would be better to start with uh, pencil on paper versus uh, starting in Procreate so that you would get a better feel uh, of the animation itself? Not necessarily. I mean, it's, to me, it's more about what you... One of the things I love about Procreate is um, is the ability to see the animation play back right away. When you're animating on paper, you're having to... You know, you got to go and shoot it. You have to have a camera set up. You've got to have all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's not always possible. Angry Potato on YouTube says... Angry Potato? I'm hoping for some good pom-pom wobbling in the end. Please don't disappoint me. <laughs> well, you might be disappointed. Get used to it. <laughs> and then uh, another YouTube question. How do you think is a good way to learn acting? Should I go to some acting school or watching movies? Or what do you think? It's all of that. Watch, watch movies, take improv classes. I took improv classes. We all did at Disney. We took a lot of improv classes, and it, and it helps. But, I mean, really, it comes down to studying it. You know, I watch a lot of film. I watch a lot of film. And, uh, and, I, and I used to get a lot of cues from some of my favorite films. And uh, Crispy Cactus on Twitch says, Hey, uh, I think just sometimes, so you know, Aaron, you're sometimes hitting your mic with the paper. Yeah. Which, I do know. I just, I, it's hard to avoid it. Yeah, it just causes a... Last the sound. There we go.
So now you can see them kind of coming up. Whoa! Whoa! Come back. Do one more drawing in here. All right, see? Animation can be fun. Slow, but it's fun. Is it normal to often dislike your own animation? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, if you're just starting out and you, you know, you're not liking where it's going, of course. That's called learning. But I don't dislike my own animation. Well, I mean, I think you've said going back, you would rather like you. There's stuff you would redo with Raja, or for instance, right? So I think that's yeah. Just but normal to to me, better. it's still it's still passable. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying. It's. I think what they were getting at is you hear all the time about you know actors that can't watch themselves on the screen because they don't like. Well, I didn't take it that way at all. But yeah. Is there any way you can see some works of uh, my animated characters and give them a review? Not right now we can't. I don't really have the ability to do that just because I've got, we have, we get that request from thousands of people and I just don't have the ability to do it for everybody. And we have our own uh, projects that we're trying to get done. In the future, we are looking at ways of trying to get some, some uh, interaction with, with people. But right now we're just not able to do it. But we will eventually. Arturo Garcia asks, uh, would you guys ever make uh, Toon Boom and uh, Harmony 2D animation lessons? No. Down the road? Not right now. We don't have any plans on that. Uh, we don't have a, a subscription to that. It's not something that I use. If we have someone down the road that is familiar with it and wants to do it, we might consider that. But right now, uh, we don't use Toon Boom Harmony. So it's not really anything on our, on our radar right now. Plus, the reality is, is that the most of our courses are not software specific. So exactly. even though Aaron uses TV Paint uh, as his preferred software, the courses aren't TV Paint courses. They're designed around fundamentals and principles of animation, which you would apply to any piece of software, be it Harmony or Adobe Animate or Flash or Procreate or any of the above. You know, you're going to get the courses aren't software specific. Uh, what is the benefit of drawing with your paper upright in front of you, like on a slanted desk or easel, rather than flat on a desk in front of you? Saves my back. <laughs> it saves my neck. Plus, you don't you see the image. Uh, the image doesn't get skewed when the image is laying flat, and you're looking at it at an angle. It becomes skewed. You're seeing it foreshortened. And what happens is when you want to unskew it, you have to lean forward, which in turn is the back problem. Yeah. So I'll make this 13. Lucky number. <coughs> and we'll just hold it for four. So let's do an in-between going into this drawing. We'll make this five. Drawing five. I've been having trouble for a long time with drawing portraits, but I can draw cartoon characters nicely. Any advice on how I can overcome this difficulty and draw a portrait as close to the person as possible? Portraits are a little different than cartoon characters in that they're you know, cartoon characters are pushed. Uh, they tend to be less detailed. There's a lot of issues that go into a, a cartoon character that you don't deal with with a portrait. 
you know, and you got to think about lighting. You got to think about all kinds of different things. And so, with portrait drawing, I would, I would recommend, uh, you know, looking at anatomy and, you know, different lighting, uh, all of that. That's going to go into, you know, more of the portrait work. Uh, we actually have a course on drawing portraits and likenesses on our website yep. uh, by Ken Spurduso. And if you use code winter save, you can get it for just $10 right now. Um, and it's a great co course too. It's a great course. And he talks a lot about if you're struggling getting a likeness and he touches on this in his oil painting course that just came out as well. One of the things to do is break it down into simple shapes and focus on just the shapes and their relationships and proportions to one another. Because usually if your likeness doesn't look right, it's because something's off on your proportions. So, something to maybe consider. Animating Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Big squash. Squishy, squishy. Squishy squash. Uh, what art skill did you uh, prioritize to learn? Drawing. You can draw, you can do anything in art, I, I believe. Good drawing skills. I think that's number one. And then, you know, just a good ethic, too. Work, working hard. So here he's, he's squashing down and getting ready to come back up into the big ho, 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 ho. ho. Coming up there. YouTube comment. Hey, Aaron, I'm going through your Procreate course now. I love it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm glad you like it. Merry Christmas. All right, so let's, now that we've got that, let's get over here. There's our finishing drawing. I like this drawing. What is that pen you are drawing? It's a pencil. This it's is a, a Mitsubishi pencil, right? Yep, it's a Mitsubishi uh, Number 10, is it? It's a Mitsubishi Hi Uni, H I U N I 10B. Here they are, right here. Did you work on Brother Bear 2? And if not, did you like the movie? Uh, I didn't work on it, and I've never seen it. So there you go. <laughs> I've heard good things about it. I've never seen it either. All right, so. Oh, ho, ho. So I, I want to get a nice 
kind of arc coming over. Oh, and this is nice to hear. Angry Potato says, I had a great experience with your customer service or customer support after I had something messed up with my order. I really appreciate that. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, we worked really hard on that. Uh, Claudia, Steve, myself, the whole team, everybody works hard on trying to help. If you place an order with our website, we want to make sure that you have the best experience possible. To a degree. I mean, come on. <laughs> That'll make my leaf a little miserable. <laughs> Von Berger asks, does the Mitsubishi come with voice recognition technology? Oh, God. No. Uh, especially, especially when you're in a lift in Scotland. Arturo asks, how do you feel about Netflix uh, canceling Ember, Spa's next movie? I have no idea what Ember, what state Ember was in, so I don't, I don't really, I mean, I'm sad for, for uh, Sergio and Spa Studios, but um, yeah, I've been there. I've had my movies canceled as well. Um, but it's hard to say. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's horrible. Our understanding is that he's able to shop it elsewhere, so hopefully he finds a new yeah. one for it. Um, what is Snow Bear going to be finished? <laughs> Next week. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got uh, probably by the end of the year. That's our goal. Not this year. Next year. The end of the new year, 2023. Were there any films in the past you wish you could have animated? Uh um, like Pinocchio or Sleeping Beauty, uh, any of the classics. Uh, what would be your favorite Disney uh, animated film? Bambi. I always talk about Bambi. I love the artistry of Bambi and the natural, uh, just the the way they got the animals to feel like real animal, like real deer, and and that forest. That, you know, for as stylized as it is, it's so real. Everything about that film I love. Was that their third movie? Uh, yeah. Uh, Telly asks, uh, can you say Happy Hanukkah? Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who's celebrating Hanukkah. And Kwanzaa, for those people celebrating Kwanzaa. And just a wonderful holiday season to everybody. And a Happy New Year. Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. Aaron, when you were starting out, how hard was it to learn how to do smear frames and wipes? Deciding smear frames that, and wipes are super easy, actually. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with those. As long as they stay within the arc. Uh, Kasser says, uh, actually, Fantasia was the third movie before Bambi. Oh, there you go. That's right. You said on a previous live stream that you probably wouldn't go back to Dis working at Disney again, but would you ever direct another movie with them if you had the chance? Probably not. No, probably not. I mean, it I guess it does depend on the film, but... Um, no. And that's not because you had a bad... No, I didn't have a bad experience at all. I'm just... I'm on to different things and I to me that's just going backwards I like I like making I like making our own film that I'm that I'm really kind of hooked on now and the person Talia who um, asked about 
saying happy Hanukkah says that she she uh she celebrates uh, Hanukkah. I would assume so. <laughs> oh, could be could be asking for a friend. Yeah. Um, actually, a couple of uh, folks asked, asked at the same time. Uh, did you see the new Pinocchio? Uh, Guillermo uh, del Toro's? Yes. Yeah, I think we talked about it on last week's live stream. Yep, I liked it. It grew on me, I should say. You cable my, 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 my big crazy like now is Avatar. Oh, yeah. Avatar, I just went. I've never seen anything like it. It's just the most amazing film going experience I've ever had. Yeah, I watched um, earlier in the week, I watched the behind the scenes of some of the stuff. And. Oh, yeah. And they were. They were and we always saw like the, that like Sigourney Weaver was. Was making a return like how? How are they putting? Like how is she being in here again? Like, what? Don't spoil it. Well, she uh, uh, she plays as one of the daughters. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I was watching the thing on where they where they trained to hold their breath and all that. Oh yeah. Who um, was in Titanic? Uh, Kate. Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. Yeah, she held her breath for seven minutes fifteen seconds. Yeah, she she beat Tom Cruise's record. I know. I blew it out of the water. It wasn't even close. It's like a full minute longer. Yeah, I think like Tom was able to stand her for like six, but she yeah. I just like seven. The longest I've ever held my breath, and that's just laying static in the water, was three min three three and a half minutes. The idea of staying underwater for twice that long it blows my mind. Wow! Because I actually well, came up and my lips were blue. Yeah. While they're acting out their scenes underwater. Yeah. Moving, moving around. Well, no, they they the seven fifteen was just laying static. Oh, that was just laying static. Yeah, but I mean, still, it's amazing. Yeah. You know what the world record is? Was it like 20? No, no, no. You'll die. It's 13 minutes. <laughs> Even that is pretty crazy. Yeah. So I see the be his beard is catching up. Arturo asks, <laughs> Disney offered you money to buy Snow Bear, but with the caveat that they make the bear talk, would you slap them or kick them? <laughs> yeah, that would be an Ed Catmull thing. He would, he would make him talk. Uh, watching in the UK, uh, when you first started out, uh, did you spend... Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. What's that? Uh, when you first started out, did you spend a lot of time working in, uh, looking in the mirror uh, to learn expressions? No. I never used a mirror. Never did use a mirror. Um, I don't know any guys that actually used a mirror. Everybody had a mirror by their desk. And maybe some guys did. A lot of that was just for show for the cameras. No, it's better to feel the, to me, it's more about feeling the expression than looking in a mirror. Ho, ho, ho. So here we're getting some new New keys. Let's have his head kind of circle around. Uh, when you look up while flipping, are you looking at uh, another screen? I'm looking, yes, I'm looking at, I want to make sure, I'm looking at our camera. Um, 
which there's, is the, there's a down shooter right here, this camera. I'm looking at the screen to make sure that when I'm flipping, you guys can see what I'm seeing. I want to make sure you can see what I see. Do you see what I see? A drawing, a drawing. Look at him draw away. <laughs> I want to get a little bit of a circle right here. Bring his nose. There we go. Oh, Talia says, I celebrate both holidays and love them very much. Oh, I can celebrate two holidays. Uh, what character would you have animated if you worked on Robin Hood? I would have loved to have animated Robin Hood. Well, I would have loved to have animated Robin Hood. Yeah, what character would you have? Uh, Robin Hood. The Robin Hood himself. himself. The character, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this is going to be... I'll make this one 30. Now, what kind of paper are you using again? Three. This is animation paper. So this is 22 pound animation paper that I get from uh, animation supp cartoon supplies in Burbank, California. Uh, it's pre-punched. 22 pound. Uh, this particular paper is 13 and a half inches by 17 inches. Although I like the 12 inch by 17 inch better. So what uh, what do you mean uh, when when it's uh, by the poundage? That's how much a ream is. How much one pound one ream weighs? Yeah, it's how much a ream weighs. A ream? Yes. In this case, I think it's five hundred sheets. And a similar question to Robin Hood, but. Uh, what character from 101 Dalmatians would you have liked to animate? Uh, probably Cruella. I think she would have been fun to animate. Why don't you use the light on your animation table? Because um, having the light on, first of all, I stack my paper anyway, so the light doesn't really do anything. Um, but I also, I was trained to not use the light because... It's more about watch, you know, animating shapes and not lines. So I try not to, once you get the light on, you're seeing through so many different, uh, you're just seeing a lot of line work. And I would rather not see that. Oh, Nick just took off. Would you have loved to work with guys like uh, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnson? Oh, of course. No call. Here, I'm going to have those, this mustache drag a little bit more. Uh, Eric on Facebook says, uh, Hi, guys. Uh, maybe you have answered this in the past, but whatever happened to Art Story? Art Story... Um, we pitched it, I pitched it to Fox, I pitched it to DreamWorks, I pitched, I actually pitched it all over the place, and it just didn't get any traction, and eventually we had to um, just kind of move on, because uh, it wasn't getting picked up anywhere. Um, we ended up paying back 90% a, a of the, the uh, Kickstarter we got, and then, um, and then we moved on. I mean, it's still a possibility, although... It probably will not happen just because of all the, 
you know, we're into, we're, we've moved on basically. Uh, but at one point, I mean, at one point I, I, I was pitching it, man, I went to, I went to LA and I had, I think five different pitches and it just wasn't getting, it wasn't getting the traction that we were hoping for. Welcome back. Uh, is there a situation where you have the option uh, to draw Pokemon characters, or are you not allowed because of copyrights? I'm not interested. <laughs> it's just it's not my it's not my bag, baby. And it's probably yeah. There's copyright issues in there too. You can draw them if you want. People draw them all the time. But the point is, yeah, it's just not. It's not I don't. I don't, I don't like doing other people's characters. Exactly. And Pokemon isn't my thing. I'm 54. <laughs> It's more my thing, but unfortunately, I don't draw. At least not anymore. I haven't drawn in years. So here, I'm going to have the beard. Someone on Facebook writes, uh, once I asked a mentor, uh, who is more interesting to draw, a villain or a hero? Uh, he said villain because it's fun and a villain can do anything a hero can't do. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, there, there's definitely really fun, interesting villains to draw, but I, I would argue that if you have a well-written hero, they're, they're just as fun. Especially if they're, you know, if they're the ones arcing, you know, like Beast. Beast was kind of, he was kind of the villain and, and, and hero, although, yeah, Gaston was the villain, but Beast had a lot of inner turmoil to go, go through. And I had a lot more fun drawing Beast than I think I would have drawing Gaston. What's your favorite uh, African animal? <clears throat> Any of the big cats and, and uh, elephants. I love them, love them, love them. I'm, I'm coming around in a circle here. Do you show how to get the materials for paper animation in your upcoming course, like where to order them? Exactly? Yes, we will have links for all of that. Uh, what is the coolest hybrid you've drawn besides the beast? I, I, I don't know. It's not something I... I mean, I've drawn a few hybrids here and there, but I don't know what's the coolest. It's not something I normally draw. It's more it's usually out of a... A request day or something, so it's not something that really sticks with me. Oh, that elephant zebra or that elephant. Yeah, elephant I know, but tigers. I don't. I just don't know if it's the most interesting. No, I was favorite. Just, yeah, it's just, I was saying that I think that's a cool one, and then the zebra one was cool. You know, yeah, the zebra one's one of the one I remember best. The zebra so. lion. That was a nice one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Martin Berger. Uh, says, I'm still waiting for the live stream where Aaron, Nick, and Dustin switch roles. Dustin drawing, Nick doing voices, and Aaron <laughs> asking questions. <laughs> well, it's never going to happen. Oh. Oh, oh. Who animated Shang in Mulan? That was uh, uh, Ruben Aquino. Ruben Aquino. Oh yeah, I'm a, a, so I mentioned about the Octo Wolf. Oh yeah, the, oct the Octo Wolf. Uh, 
Uh, Andrew Sharp says, hello, Aaron. Hello. Uh, would you ever do a dueling animator uh, thing live where one animator animates, uh, animates one scene and the other does the opposing character? It would be super interesting to see the process there. Uh, it's, well, the problem with the animation is how much work it takes. So and that's not how it's done, actually. Yeah, it's not. So it's, yeah. Because one animator follows the lead of the other animator. So, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you could do a dueling animator thing where you were just animating different things, but once again, it's just, that's a lot of labor to get somebody to do. And especially for a, li a live stream, that could, that could be like hours long live stream, like an all day live stream almost. Yeah, it would be, it would be yeah, we'd have to be very, like, what I'm drawing now I'm, would have to be a lot looser than what I'm drawing now. Loosey-goosey. That's 25. Uh, who was the lead animator of Tug in Brother Bear? 29. Make this 29. Uh, uh, that was uh, Rune Benneke. What was it again? He, Rune Benneke. Rune. He was also the head animator of... Coda's mom ah. out on the ice. And what about uh, um, Sitka? Sitka was Anthony Michaels. Did all of the same animators animate the animal version as the human version? Like they no. So like Kenai. I guess Kenai's the Kenai human name. was Jim Jackson. Kenai bear was was uh, Byron Howard. Did you just say Jim Jackson? I said Jim Jackson. Is the twentieth man to be on the movie? Yeah. Ho ho ho. Martin Berger says, guess what I'll be doing after the live stream? Downloading a new course on Creature Art Teacher. <laughs> nice. Speaking of which, it's the holidays, and we've got a lot of great sales going on over at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, today, it actually ends tonight, but if you use promo code WINTERSAVE, you can get any course, brush set, or photo pack for just $10. That's WINTER-SAVE. We've got a brand new course from Tony Cipriano, uh, Sculpting Superheroes for Action Figures, that's up for pre-order. That's a ZBrush course, that's really cool. He's gonna take you through sculpting anatomy and also how to do like articulation to make him a figure for posing and bendable arms and all that stuff. And then we've got our memberships. We've got two memberships on our website. We've got our annual plan and our monthly streaming plan, both of which are 40% off right now, and that ends very soon. So that's $100 off the annual plan, which gets you everything on the website, which is over 600 hours of lessons and courses. Plus it gets you all of the brushes. Plus it gets you all of our photo packs. And if you sign up by Christmas day, you're gonna be eligible. Uh, for either of the membership plans to, uh, we're gonna do a giveaway of, if you go back and watch last week's live stream, Aaron did a big uh, leopard drawing, a really large one, uh, and we're gonna be giving that away to a random subscriber, a random member. Uh, so check it out, creatureartteacher.com. Oh, your face is getting really blown out on camera from the sunlight. No, you have to rain. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun. I say, <laughs> get off my lawn. What's your opinion on dinosaurs? Are they fun to draw for you? Yes. Since we can only guess what they look like. What do I? What I? One thing I love to do, and it's just something I discovered in the last few years is um, I've always been fascinated by forensic artists that like take a human skull that's found somewhere and they try to find the likeness of the victim and they build up like a clay version of what that person may have looked like. 
And uh, that's always fascinated me. And so I'm, I'm you know, taking animal skulls and doing that, or ancient skulls. I did it with a saber-toothed cat, and it was really cool. I found it to be a lot of fun. Will I have access to the, as an annual member, will I have access to the paper animation course when it comes out? Yes, absolutely. You get all of the courses on the website, plus everything we release over the next year. Yes, you do. Who is your favorite animator to work with? Glenn Keane. And Alex Cooperschmidt. Do any of your animation uh, ever end up looking like you? <laughs> I would argue these are kind of looking like me. Well, you actually animated yourself recently. I did. I did, actually. So that one well. definitely looks like you. <laughs> uh, do you have any favorite gesture drawing artists? No, I don't. No, I don't. That gesture drawing to me is more of a it's more of an exercise than a specialty, I guess. But I mean, I guess people do specialize in it. Martin Berger says uh, to you, Nick, you should add the hashtag uh, ASMR to this live stream on YouTube because of all the paper flipping. <laughs> oh, boy, that light is getting in my eyes. Holy cow! You want me to put this on the window or something? Uh, no, nah, it'll, it'll pass eventually. Ever got charged by an elephant in Kenya? Somewhat. Uh, not in Kenya, but in Tanzania. A big oh the big drawing board that might that might do it that might be too big if, you get, if it'll sit right up on top maybe no the big drawing board out there up against the the flat file yeah is that too heavy or is that as long as it sits on this Bingo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Oh, much better. I can see. So I'm trying to get like a little circular pattern in the way it comes back around. So I want the nose right about in here. Actually, not even. More over here. Here's the you, other thing I love about drawing on paper. Uh, can you draw dragons sometime in the future? Yeah, I've done dragons on live streams before. Yeah, we can't, can't draw dragons right, right now because we're currently animating Santa. But definitely, I'm sure we can draw some dragons. Are they asking me to do a drawing of a dragon now? Well, the question was, can you draw dragons please, please? So I was assuming oh. that, that, that they were talking about now. Rami asks, uh, what's the most fun stage of animating for you? This stage right here, working out the rough. Finding the, the acting. I 
I love this stage. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. You can see him making the sounds. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Have you directed anything other than Brother Bear? I, I, there was a sh very small animated short called How to Haunt a House with Goofy. <laughs> that was my first project I ever directed. How to Haunt a House. It's on YouTube. You can find it. And you've directed a number of projects that didn't get finished because that's oh, yeah. pretty I've, I've directed. And... I've actually directed quite a few projects that didn't see the light of day. Unfortunately. Which happens a lot in the animation industry. Oh, yeah. It is indeed quite unfortunate. Crazy Santa. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> How do you know that will align to the sound correctly? Because I've got my exposure sheet set up, and my exposure sheet, hold on one second, if you came in late, I'm working with this, this is called an exposure sheet, and it's got the dialogue, these are all the frames going across, and these, this is the dialogue, ho, 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 and so I know that on frame 19, I want to have the H shape. I want to, I know on frame 21, it's got to be the O and so on and so forth for moving through the whole shot. So that's how we get lip sync. Uh, when you're flipping the pages back and forth, what are you looking for? Can you explain? I'm looking for the movement. So I'm looking at how everything, uh, just how everything's moving. So in this case, I'm, you know, like with the beard right now, I'm trying to get a little bit of an overlap in the hair. Everything has a different movement. And here, you know, as I flip back and forth, I'm looking at the mustache movement, trying to get a little bit of overlap there. Eyebrows. <laughs> All right, uh, Santa looks very surprised in this frame. <laughs> he does. That's the face he makes when he's about to run, run Grandma over. Yeah. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. You consider no such thing as Santa. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. 
Everybody now, Grandma got one. <laughs> Mary Cripper. So what I'm doing now is I want to. I'm animating the. In paper animation, how do you double check that the movement is following a curve? That's why you flip the paper, That's right? why I'm flipping the paper, yeah, because I'm following, I'm watching to see if it's following the arcs. That drawing's a little, a little wonky, but we're going to roll through it anyway. YouTube uh, comment, you're currently on our big screen playing as our whole family is making hard candy for Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas. That's awesome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> what is your favorite and least favorite part about the new Avatar? I don't have a least favorite anything about Avatar. <laughs> know that you're not animating the second and third hose too early or too late. I know that you have the timing sheet, but I can't seem to wrap my head around how it actually helps with accuracy. Because I know the dialogue is written out on each fr on the frame that the dialogue is hitting on. So I know that I need what mouth shape I need to have at any particular frame number. Yeah, so the frame number corresponds to the number of drawings. So if there's, he knows that you know, on drawing 24, he has to have be hitting that. Or frame 24, or not the number of drawings. It's actually the number right, of frames. Right, right. But I'm saying if I'm saying if it was in a half second, it would be right at the one second mark. That's all I was getting at. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because I, I might only have 50 drawings in this, but it or, or 25 drawings in this, but it's you know 50 frames long. Right, because that would be on twos. Right, right exactly. So the drawing numbers actually correspond to, when I'm, when I'm putting a number up here, it's basically corresponding to the frame number, but it's not the drawing number. It's the frame number. And actually, in this one, I wanted it to be 37. And then here, we're just basically going to settle in. So this is all just a pose test. You know, there's no way in the amount of time that we have on our live stream to get this all fully in between unless we did like a 10 hour, eight hour live stream. But we'll get enough in here that we'll be able to shoot it and see if we can get it to work. Isn't it harder to animate just a head like that since you could rotate the head unintentionally around the wrong pivot point? Uh, a little bit, but I'm, I'm having fun with it. But how do you know the audio will sync with a certain frame number? Aren't you at the mercy of the timing of the audio, not the animation? Well, yes, that's what's driving. The I already frame. have the I already have the audio synced up on a on on the on another frame um, shot. I have, I've got the audio synced up, so I know where the audio is hitting. That's why I was able to write out this exposure sheet. Right. So the the. The way they used to do it at Disney is they had somebody whose job it was to listen to the audio. They would run that through a... Yeah, okay, you got it now. Okay, okay, in the comments. Perfect. But they would run that through the audio and they would actually know, okay, on frame number 180, he's making a, a consonant sound and he, they would write that down and then they would make it an O shape at frame 121 or whatever. Uh, will you be making a live stream next week? Uh, yes. When you say settle in, do you mean bringing your drawings closer together? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. I thought we were taking uh, next week off. Oh, uh, you're right. We are taking next week off to get uh, to get that done. Yeah, we're probably, we're taking, uh, um, next week we'll probably be off of our live streams because of, uh, just because of the holiday. We need a break. <laughs> so 
question for Dustin. Can you do an Australian accent? Oh, boy. Um, Get to the chopper. Throw another shrimp on the bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um... I'm kind of out of my out of my element here for a minute. <laughs> or, I don't quite feel prepared. Prepared, there you go, you got that. That's more New Zealand, I'd say. Yeah. Crikey. Crikey. Good eye, mate. <laughs> now that right there, that there, that's an animator. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> Just had to feel it, there you go. <laughs> All he's got to do is use his eraser and he'll erase it out of existence. I'm going to touch it with a pen. Have you checked out Procreate at all? They have an animation feature that I want to get into, but it's a little different than TV Paint, so I'm intimidated. <laughs> I just gave an entire uh, live full-day course on animating and Procreate last week. Last Saturday. Yes, I have seen it, and I've used it, and I've taught on it. It's great. Are Disney movies easier to animate than anime? No, I think anime is easier to animate than Disney. Yeah. Because you have to do more drawings. And yep, and the, the characters are more complex. Did you see Avatar in 2D, 3D, IMAX, or regular? Yes. I saw it 3D, IMAX, big... So here he's, his eyebrows are going to settle in. Uh, Dustin, what do you say to the new games? I'm most excited for Armored Core 6 that was announced uh, the other week. So in fact, we're finally getting another Armored Core after nearly 10 years. Um, it's one of my favorite, all time favorite franchises. Nerd! Says the guy animating. Nerd. <laughs> We're all nerds here. Do you prefer Yosemite, uh, Yosemite Sam or Elmer Fudd? Oh, Yosemite Sam. It's more fun. My back is burning! Uh, do you like anime? Uh, I like Miyazaki. I guess I'm more of the anime guy. Is that considered anime? Miyazaki. Yeah. Miyazaki. Anything anime. Japanese, right? From the mention of uh, us taking a break next week, Eric, Erica says, you guys have earned a break. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Did you have to master bipedal walk, skip, run, cycle before experimenting uh, quadrupedal cycles? Hold on one second. I want to do one thing here. Say that again. Um, did you have to ma master uh, bipedal movements like walk, skip, and run cycles before experimenting with uh, quadrupedal? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I learned bipedal before I learned quadruped, for sure. And is there somewhere I can find uh, your teachings with Procreate Animate? Or animating with Procreate? Um, n well, yes. I, I do, a, I have a Procreate course on my website, and I, I, I touch on the animation in that. 
Yeah, you show how to use the tools in that, and uh, that's a good one. That's a good familiarization. We do a whole walk cycle, demonstration. and that that video is enough to get you uh, started with animation and Procreate for sure. Yeah. Uh, so if you go to creatureartteacher.com, there's a link to that, and if you use code Winter Save. You can get that Procreate course or any course on our website for that matter for just $10. Any course, brush set, or photo pack. CreatureRTeacher.com and promo code WINTER SAVE at checkout. Let's call this one 47. I'm going to call this one 47. So, this, the animation that we're going to see is not necessarily going to be smooth because this is the pose test, but we'll get a sense of it. We do one more drawing and then we'll go ahead and shoot it. I'll, I'm, one more drawing after this one that I'm just starting. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, Pokemon anime? I don't have any thoughts on it. I'm not, it's not, it's not my, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> so it's not something I follow. I'm more of the I don't, I don't have an Pokemon fan, it. but I'm more of the gaming side of Pokemon. You never yeah. watched a cartoon, Dustin? Uh, the last time I, I watched the cartoon was when um, was like the very first generation. Yeah, did you see Ash finally won? I, not only finally won, but next year they're making making a final like six episode series of him as champion retiring. Oh, nice! They're actually the 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 very icon of Pokemon is retiring. Yeah, I feel like I feel like they'll bring it back. It's uh, it's gonna sound nerdy, but uh, <laughs> next year's gonna be very very sad for a lot of Pokemon fans. <laughs> well, they'll bring them back. There's no way they'll leave them retired. Oh, I'm sure they'll bring them back as like a maybe a side character. You know, kind of like what they did with Rocky for uh, for the movie Creed. But do you see that? Um, do, you, do you ever use one keyframe multiple times within your animation? No, not you mean the same draw, the same yeah, frame? Yeah, that's what no. I'm saying. Because it looks too stiff if you do that, right? Yeah, it looks completely stiff. There's no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Did you see that? Um, do you see any of the new trailers for the uh, that '90s show? I did. Oh. That's pretty uh, interesting. Like I want, I didn't really watch that many episodes of um, that '70s show. It was more of Austin's show. Um, but all the episodes I did watch, it was it was fun. So definitely curious on how this uh, this new series is gonna un unfurl. We ended up doing a uh, an illustration for Topher Grace for one of his scripts. Yeah. When working at Disney, would you guys do any specific exercises after long hours of sitting and animating? Yeah, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, some of us worked out, some of us didn't. I worked out pretty pretty religiously, and then I didn't. <laughs> All through Brother Bear, I ran every day, and I lifted weights every day. I'm almost 50, and I want to rekindle my love for illustration. Do you think age prevents someone from becoming a good artist? No. The only thing that prevents you from becoming a good artist is you, and, and it's, and it's lack, lack of doing it. If, if you're doing it, you're going to get better at it, no matter what age. Yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. I don't care what they say. Uh, where can I buy animation paper like what you have? So there's a couple of places you can get animation paper. Uh, one of the sites we recommend is cartoonsupplies.com. They're out of Burbank, California. So if you're outside the U.S., the shipping can be pretty expensive, but it's cartoonsupplies.com. You can also find animation supplies like peg bars and packs of animation paper that's pre-punched. You can find that stuff on Amazon, believe it or not. So some of it's more affordable than others, 
But if you search for animation paper on Amazon, you should be able to find it. And really, that's all you need is some animation paper and a peg bar. That's, you don't need a light table. Um, you can get one if you want one, but Aaron never uses a light table. I never so. use it. No, never use it. Um, you know, they come in handy as tracing tables, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, I would check out uh, either cartoonsupplies.com or Amazon. And you might find some on uh, blick.com and some of those as well, but I'm not sure on those. Uh, is there something that you wanted to hear when uh, you were just starting to animation? Uh, what do you recommend hear? for beginners? Is there something that I wanted to hear? Yeah, when you were just starting to learn. Like, what, is there something that you wish somebody... Uh, There's the last... Oh. Huh? Oh. 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 Um. Like, what advice would you give to a beginner that you wish you heard from someone else? I don't know. Well, there's nothing that I wish I had heard because I, I mean, I heard everything I needed to hear. But really, I mean, the biggest thing you need to do is just persevere and, and don't be impatient. I find the, the most common trait among young artists today is impatience because everything, everyone's so used to instant gratification, getting things very quickly, whether it's, you know, instant stardom on, on American Idol or, or whatever it might be. But the idea of becoming an animator, becoming an artist, that's something that can't be rushed. And um, it just takes years of dedication and practice. And so you just have to be in it for the long haul. Twitch question. Isn't it crazy that Santa's red clothes come from Coca-Cola? I just learned that in my advertising class. I didn't know that either. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the modern design of Santa Claus that we all recognize is from an advertising campaign by Coca-Cola. And it, huh. just, it just caught on so much that it just became the standard. Wow. I... Okay. <laughs> that took me by surprise. I didn't realize yeah. that. Like, I know that uh, I do... I have seen, like, all the old... Like, the very old, like, 1940s and 50s billboards of San Santa Claus Coca-Cola uh, ads. But I didn't know that that's how... Yeah, I thought they were going off of what was already in the common psyche. Yeah. Nope. It's the other way around. Wow. Um, well, what did Santa look like beforehand? Well, before that, I, actually, this is interesting in and of itself. He was more traditional, like Father Christmas, like what they had in, um, or what they have in the UK. Oh, which is still kind of a version of what we've got. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the, the red and white coloring we, get, we have now is from yeah. the ad campaign. What are re reoccurring But mistakes? I wonder what he really looks like when you see him. Huh? I said, I wonder what he really looks like when you see him. Huh. That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, what are reoccurring mistakes that you see animators make when submitting a reel or portfolio? Overacting. All the time. Overacting. Not, not being honest with what's being acted. And being more caught up in the mechanics. And trying to, you know, thinking about mechanics and being so caught up in that that they actually forget the performance. That's the most common mistake I see. It was the most common thing that I did as a young artist, uh, animator as well. You get so caught up in trying to move things the right way that you forget why you're moving them. Are you using a uh, four pencil, easy to erase? It's a graphite pencil. A four B. No, this is a 10 B. 10 B? Yeah. This is a 10 B. <laughs> This thing's, this thing's soft. Uh, how's the weather there? We have, uh, we have a sudden thaw in Russia and there are puddles everywhere. Uh, and this is bad because when it all freezes, there'll be ice everywhere, but dangerous, uh, very dangerous weather. Uh, uh, it's sun sunny and warm here in Florida. Yeah, friends from other parts of the country say they have uh, snowstorms and we have puddles. Yeah, that could be a risk. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's getting, it's cooling off quite a bit over here. A lot colder than usual Florida temperature. Uh, 
uh, Liz Davies on Facebook says that uh, Chroma Color uh, for the UK uh, does uh, animation supplies. Well, that's cool. We can talk about uh, yeah. where they can get uh, the supplies from. Yeah. And so if you need uh, animation supplies in the UK area, or, uh, in that area, I guess, uh, go over to uh, Chroma Color. Thank you, Liz Davies. All right, so we've got everything filled out. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. This will only take a, f a minute or two. Are you going to be able to switch the cameras over, Dustin? Yep. To, the uh, to the desk, yes. Not yet, not yet. No, of course. And uh, I've got... I just got to get my phone set up on there. I've gotten in the habit of moving, oh, wow. doing it pretty quickly, so we should be able to do this fairly quick. Nina says, uh, hi from Greenland. Wow, hello. Aaron, have you ever worked with artists who have aphastasia, the inability to visualize? Uh, if I have, I, you know, because supposedly Glenn Keane has that. I don't believe it, but uh, if I have, I didn't know it. It's not something, it's not even, that's something I've just learned about in the last year. Got, got a pretty good number of drawings done today. I don't know if this will, it's very much just a pose test. Oops, let me do that again. Let's do it. All right, Dustin. Switch. Yeah, we're gonna come over here. Well, we're gonna get Dragon Frame open. Yeah, I gotta do it on my. We got the whole system going. Hey, there's an image of Nick. Yeah, yeah, Nick. No, but Dragon Frame's <laughs> not open. That's all. Yeah, and then I gotta get the, my phone on, turned on, and then we gotta. <laughs> Put your face on the screen there for a second, there, Nick. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're going to get this shot. And here's a really fun part of uh, traditional animation. I'll pull out on that. Oh, Jenny on Facebook says, hey, you got to go up to configure. Yep. Here. Uh, Jenny here is saying hello from Israel. At the moment. Uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, all okay. the way down. That's not the way we, I usually do it, though. But if that works, that's awesome. Cool. All right, we got it. Uh, Dustin, remember how to switch the camera? To go wide? If you want to take over over there, sure. Where is As we go wide, then it goes focus. There we go. Wide. Go and then telephoto side to side out. There we oh, go. There we go. I just need to angle it down a bit. Down. I'm gonna have to move the uh, pegs. The pegs again. It's just because it's the way I have it framed. Oh, oh we got to go wider on it. Is what I need to do. Yeah, that's what I was saying, right? The pegs should always stay the same. No, because I it depends on where you have it fielded. Because uh, I had to move them before. You want me to keep it a telephoto here? 
Yeah, keep it at telephoto. Just let me open it up. Yeah, it's slightly crooked. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. That's close enough. Yeah. This is this is just close enough for what we're trying to do. There we go. Are you on the? Uh, is everyone seeing the computer yep. screen? Everyone sees the computer screen. Oh, good. All right. Is my face showing? Okay, so for the first one, you're going to hold this for four frames, Dustin. Okay. And so, once again, folks, this is a... One, two, three, four. Got it? Got it, yep. So this is the exposure sheet, once again. Whoops, why is that not showing up? There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. You got it? Yeah, I was just making sure that we didn't. So once again, this is the exposure sheet. I've got all my drawings written out here, and they're just keyed in. I haven't done all my in-betweens, all the drawings that are going to make the animation smoother. But I, ha I So when I shoot like the first drawing, I know that it has to be held for four frames before we go to drawing five and so on, and that's how we work it all out, and we'll hit just our key drawings. So I know that sounds confusing, but uh, once if you, when I, if you get my animation course on paper, uh, I go into it in detail. So you shot that one for four already? Okay, yeah. this one is on four. Hold on. This is out of order. That's 11. Yep. Oh, Did I do something weird here? Hold on one second. What are you doing? I'm looking at the numbering system that I have here. <laughs> So I have one, five, nine. There we go. I don't know why this. Hold on one second. I want to see something real quick. Did I miss number something? I did. You miss number? Yeah. Hold on one second. They're all out of order. They're all out of whack. This is one, nine, thirteen, oh, they, they, yeah, they, they just got out of order here. There we go. Okay, so. Some reason that just numbered weird. Hmm. Not sure why I did that, unless I grabbed the wrong. Okay, so uh, this the sync will be a little bit off, but shoot this one for shoot this one for two. Two. Yep. One, two. Yep. Now shoot this one for four. Four. Yep. One. Two, three, four. Now shoot this one for two, 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 two. Hold on. That's this one. Shoot for four. This one for four as well. Yes, sir. I should have like a "Are you sure?" prompt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we're on. These are going to be on for two. Two. Yep. One, two. 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 One, two. 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 Yep. One, two. 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 One, two. All right, so this is on for four. Four. One, two, three, four. Why aren't you adjusting it the way you did it before? Huh? Shoot it for four. Shoot it for four? Yeah. Shoot for four. Shoot for four. Two, three, four. And four. Shoot for four. Three, four. And four again. Four. Four. This one goes on for six. Six, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
This one goes on for eight. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This goes on for eight. Eight. And this goes on for eight. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. All right. Let's see what we got here. So you'll see once I play this back, it'll. It's not going to be completely smooth because it's a pose test. But let me hit the. So you will see the anim. Let me put it on loop. So he does a little anticipation. Ho, 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 ho. Very quick. So what I would do with this afterwards is I would go back through, once we get the sound on it, and then I would, I would in between, I would get all the, the smoothness into it. So let's go back now. I'm going to export this. <clears throat> We're just going to export this right to my desktop. Yep. So here it is, right here, if I play it. Ho, ho, ho. Just like that. So let's go to Premiere. I'm going to quit out of it real quick. Oh, this is one. All right, this is from the, uh, <laughs> it's from the chorus. <laughs> Is the sound going through the board? Uh, yes, it should be. Hey, what are you looking at? That's, that's one of the lessons in the uh, paper course. So, um, let's do this. I'm going to start, I'm going to do a new sequence. Okay, and we'll just import... Desktop, and we'll look at it as a list. It'll be should be at the top. It must not have. So let's go make sure that it's yeah. So let's look at where it exported it to. Oh, I bet I know. I know where it exported it to. What did you do? Yeah, we're gonna re-export it. I sent it over to. Uh, no, oh, actually, it should have gone. Export movie, desktop, Santa, export. Oh, weird. Okay, so who's that? We'll just replace Saint it. Saint Tay. Binga, binga, boonga, boonga, boonga. Okay. So, now we're in Premiere. Cancel. Let me just refresh it. File. Man, the mouse is touchy. Don't like. There we go. List, desktop. Where is it? Oh, you just look up Santa. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Santa, there it is. Okay, so we're going to bring this over here. Yes, I got it. And then we'll shrink this, bring this here. And now we're going to import the dialogue, which I should have in my downloads. And this should be under date added. There it is. Let's see if it syncs up, because I, I may have shifted it. Ho, ho, ho. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's a little soft. It's a little bit soft, but you guys get the idea. <clears throat> ho, ho, ho. 
let me do this shift this just a little bit this way or cut this uh, right there oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so that's that's basically it in a oh, nutshell oh, oh. So with the, and we can shift the sound too, if we want, if we want it to go a little bit more this way, maybe a little later, which I, I don't think it, it, it'll feel a little too late. Actually, that's not bad. It's a little better. So you can see as a first rough pass, you can see the, you can see the ho, ho, ho. Um, there we go. I just shifted it a frame. But um, there's definitely some softness in there that I would probably change a little bit. But at least now you get an idea of how we do this. So this is, you know, animating on paper and the way we sync it or the way we get lip sync is writing out those exposure sheets. <laughs> Actually, I'm seeing it now. He could go really broad with it. I would push his expression even more now. And for the people that don't know, uh, what particular software is this that you're using right now? Oh, this is just, this is Premiere. This is Adobe Premiere editing software. The software he was using earlier for capturing the footage was called Dragon Frame. Exactly. Now we exported that and brought that into Premiere, which is a video editing software, and added the, the audio to it. Yeah, and so I would change some of the timing on here too. So. Like some of these last drawings where it gets a little bit soft, I would have a finish a little harder. But you at least get the idea. And that's how we do animation on paper. <laughs> so that last little bit where he, would, where he finishes up, I would rather than putting those on eights the way we did, I'd probably put those on fours and have them finish out really fast and hit that last pose a little bit harder. But there you go. There's our... Uh, that's animating on paper. We just did a whole bunch of animation in what, two hours? Uh, yeah, it's currently 3.30, almost 3.30. Yeah, so two and a half hours you can sit down and you can animate something. And, um, you know, the biggest thing on this, I, was, I would change some of the timing. The, the, some of the timing that I have on here is a little bit soft. And so I would definitely go back in and change that. But you at least get an idea of what it is. And what exactly do you mean by being soft? You can see how when, when he settles in, it's just a little, it's too soft. He settles in kind of mushy. It, it feels kind of mushy and it, it'll, it'll go too slow. I want it to hit that last pose a little harder. But I, we'd have to reshoot it. And I don't feel like reshooting it right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you guys, like I said, I want you guys to see kind of the process of sitting down, drawing, putting dialogue on, and being able to do that. And Merry Christmas. We got a little ho, ho, ho in there. Or at least a happy holidays for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun for me. I always love sharing paper animation. That to me is an absolute joy. It, I feel like it's a dying art. And... Uh, you know, so many people, it, well, it's, it's just not, a, it's not an efficient way of making films anymore. Um, but, man, there's nothing better than holding a stack of drawings and flipping through them and seeing the, the life come to them. It's very satisfying. It is very satisfying. So, um, remember, uh, we got our different sales going on right now. Yeah, we got, if you head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, we've got our winter sale, which if you use promo code WINTERSAVE, you're going to get, ten, you can get any class, brush set, or photo pack for just $10. We've got a brand new course from Tony Cipriano, a ZBrush sculpture course where he teaches you how to sculpt superheroes for action figures. He's going to take you through anatomy, articulation, toy design, the whole nine. Uh, that's over at CreatureArtTeacher.com for 50% off pre-order. Aaron's paper animation course is on pre-order along with uh, another uh, pre-order course from uh, David Coleman on design stylization. You can pre-order both of those for 50% off. And Ken's Produso's oil painting, uh, oil portrait painting course is out now. That's still 50% off. And as always, we've got our memberships. 
Uh, we've got two great membership plans to choose from. Both are 40% off. That's $100 off our annual plan. That sale ends soon, and every course on our website is included, plus everything we release over the next year. And all of those items can be sent as a gift to anybody at any time. So if you're doing some last minute Christmas shopping or don't have time to get something shipped, pick up a course from We're Preacher a Our option. Teacher. Yes. There you go. We're an awesome option. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a blast. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Everything that, I hope everything comes your way. Uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, if you have family, enjoy it. Um, don't let them drive you crazy <laughs> or, or just enjoy it. Stay. And if you, uh, there's a big part of the United States, we're going to go into a deep freeze this weekend. So stay warm. And uh, I hope you guys get some really nice art supplies for Christmas. <laughs> that was always my favorite. So have a great holiday. And we will be back again uh, Are we probably, probably uh, next year, right? Next yeah, year. next year. See yeah, because uh, we won't be uh, live streaming next week. We're taking the week off. So have a great holiday, you guys. And put some beauty back into the world. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Ho, ho, ho. Cowboy <laughs> Bebop. <laughs>